It's really important we stop to think about some of the words and concepts we're using in relation to sexualities and genders. So often when people hear the word sexuality, they tend to think of LGBT, lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender, without realising that transgender is a gender issue, not a sexual orientation, and that also heterosexuals have a sexual orientation too. It's really important, therefore, that we consider genders, sexualities and the identities in relation to the particular client groups that you care for. Over the next few slides, there are opportunities for you to stop to think about the terms and concepts we're using, so please feel free to pause the video to dot your ideas down. So here are the first two terms, gender and identity. What do those two terms mean to you? You may want to stop this video just to write down some ideas before you move on. Take this a little bit further now and ask yourself what gender and identity mean to you in relation to the particular client populations that you work with in your field of practice. Now we can stop to look at these two terms, sexuality or sexualities. And you may want to consider what, what you feel the difference is between sexual orientation and sexual preference. Based on one of my publications in 2017, here are four different ways in which to look at the concept of sexuality. And in, it's important to realise that orientation, attractions and behaviours don't always match up with the way a person presents about their identity. So let's start combining some of your ideas now. Look at what you've said about sexuality and sexualities and how do they relate to the terms you wrote down for gender and identities, especially within your own client populations. It's crucial for us to acknowledge that genders, sexualities and identities are often shrouded in stigmas and stereotypes. Again, worth checking out what those two different words mean. Many people suffer under the weight of other people's prejudices, especially from social and media representations of genders and orientations. This can often have an impact on what people consider to be the norms of behaviour. But those norms are usually based on a majority perspective within a culture or society and not necessarily inclusive of those who do not seem to conform to those particular norms. Another important concept is intersectionality, a word first used within feminism to look at ways in which people are discriminated against from all other aspects of their lives um, in relation to gender and or sexuality. Bringing this video to a close, it's important for you to consider how all the concepts that you've been thinking about might interrelate within an individual, especially from the point of view of stigma, prejudice and discrimination. And don't let your learning end there. Hopefully in this resource, you've come across new ways of thinking about concepts you may or may not be familiar with, but look at ways now of taking that even further. Thanks so much for participating in this video. I hope you find the learning useful. Please feel free to share it with me on Twitter, either at my own personal account or with our sexual health students and graduates. Thanks so much. Bye bye.